Hawks, you talk and Hello, everyone. Uh, I am a program manager uh, responsible for devising and implement an dig a digital asset strategy for the University of Notre Dame. That's where I work. It doesn't look like that in the winter, believe me. Um, it's a private research university with Catholic character. It is not located in France, but <laughs> adjacent to South Bend, Indiana, it was founded by a French priest of the congreg congreg Congregation of the Holy Cross who wanted us to be a powerful force for good. Um, our athletic teams are known as the Fighting Irish. So we have uh, a huge athletic program. We are also one of the top 25 uh, national institutions. Our business undergraduate, our undergraduate, undergraduate program at the business school is rated number two nationally. We are number one in the country for the National Endowment for the Humanities with 66 fellowships since 1999. So that's the background. Um, we have since August last year, a centralized campus media protection facility and it, which provides technical and staff support for campus media production. Uh, the media center includes a studio, includes the Notre Dame Studios, which has control rooms, editing space, and professional studios. Uh, we support live and pre-produced video programming. It's also the home to video producers from many departments. Uh, I'm not familiar with video production, but here, here's the list of the equipment we have put in place. Those who are familiar with this can tell me, you know, state of the artness of this. Um, I'm more focusing on the um, data side of that venture, uh, which is a reflection of the frequent use of digital media across the university for all kinds of purposes, education, research, special event, uh, faith-based services, and most, and, and especially athletic competitions and performances. Um, our estimate is, fairly accurate estimate, is that we have at least two petabytes of videos on campus and it's growing very fast. Our estimate is that we're going to produce up to, you know, we're producing 500 ter terabytes plus per year. And we, since I arrived at Notre Dame uh, two years ago, I led an assessment project um, where we spoke to campus stakeholders to gather requirements and to make recommendations for enterprise level digital asset management or media asset um, management solution. Um, that project concluded and recommended CAT-DV as an enterprise video asset management application. Currently, we're uh, in the middle of running a new project which is intended to make CAT-DV enterprise ready. CAT-DV, I guess it stands for Catalog of Digital Videos. <laughs> it is a media asset management application or a DAM system, a lot of people call that, created by a UK-based software company in Bristol, I believe, called Squarebox. So it has the common features which allows you to ingest assets, logging, clipping, manage metadata, browse and search, and transcode. It is integrated with editing software such as Final Cut and Premiere. It also operates with tiered storage solutions, keeping track of media assets and their target uh, storage locations. Uh, one of the reasons that we recommended CatDV is because it's already in use by a couple of um, departments on campus, including the Fighting Irish Media, which is the overarching media 
uh, producing production department, or, you know, looking after all the sp all sports across board. And there's another department, Notre Dame International, which has distributed subsidiaries and look, you know, gateways uh, globally, including one on the Strand just outside this building. Um, so they use Cat EV to manage um, uh, digital photos. So the project we're currently running really is to expand Cat EV and make it available or suitable to use by the campus. We have some infrastructure in place, including a Spectralogic T950 tape library, and we have put in place 600 terabytes of SAN storage. We also have some Cat TV license, middleware appliance and license, uh, namely Black Pearl, which meets the needs of the current users. But as an enterprise solution, uh, we're looking at integration with campus IT infrastructure, single sign-on, additional license, backup, disaster recovery, and storage. I also spend a lot of time, so I'm the functional lead on this project, I spend a lot of time developing a business model which is going to take us beyond the project funding and sustain the campus use in future, which is by no means easy. And we're also looking at you know, service documentations, training and support. Uh, we actually, our IT services is um, operated um, based on the ITIL principles for those who are familiar with this. And we're fully aware of the fact that the solution we're putting in place is not meeting some of the, some of the academic use cases. For example, psychology. Video is used in psychology research, but the way they use it, the workflow, uh, is very, very different from what we're putting in place. That would be the topic of another project in future. What we're offering really is a hosted solution where we try to balance performance, security, and redundancy. So the solution included, uh, includes CAT-DV, which is the media management application. Underneath that, there are three tiers of storage. Uh, the orchestration or the management of that is done by, by Black Pearl. So we have the SAN storage to support operational use. And we also have the tape storage to accommodate growth. Uh, which offers secure and a cost-effective uh, solution. Disaster recovery is um, to, to avoid uh, catastrophic data loss, and we chose Amazon Glacier to be the resting place of our DR copy. For those um, who are involved in content creation, so the video production departments, the standard workflow or standard um, workflow is to keep four copies of assets, which I'm going to explain when we look at the data model in a bit. Here is how the CAT-DV components sort of inter work. Um, really sorry that I didn't include the client. There is a desktop and a web client which interact with the CAT-DV server, which comes with the building Apache and um, so Apache um, Tomcat, as well as I and MySQL database. So, uh, and then there is the CAT-DV CAT -DV worker, who actually, which are the uh, workflow engines, you know, works in, in the background, does the, you know, production of proxies, transcoding, copying, creating folders, all those things. So we have one CAT-DV worker dedicated to transcode. And you know, it also sends jobs, archiving to tape jobs, or archiving jobs, to Black Pearl. Um, you know, dependent on the chosen target, it writes a copy to the tape uh, as well as the tape in Glacier. So here's how, you know, it's a data model. Um, CAT-DV takes care of the ingest of the originals 
and the creation of the mezzanines and the proxy. Uh, the cat view worker automates this workflow um, from a user end user perspective, creator's perspective. Um, all they need to do is to drop files into a folder which we have agreed with them. It will be watched and as soon as new files are detected, the predefined workflow will kick in, doing things in the background. Um, so originals uh, stay on the sand briefly. As soon as they are written to the tape, after a week, they are purged. Mezzanines stay on the sand for longer, and we intend for them to stay on the sand for three months, and then they are moved to the tape. And the proxies, because they're much smaller files, I think we use quick time for that, um, they stay on the sand to aid um, resource discovery. And the chosen mezzanine format is Apple ProRes 422, which actually accounts to 80% of the bit largest departments of fighting Irish media, accounts for, you know, they do in-camera in encoding. So what they shoot already is ProRes uh, 422. We also have some red, different variations of MXF, and um, some MP4, I think. So I am shared property between the IT and the university libraries. So in addition to this project, I'm also leading a project at the Hesburgh Libraries to kickstart a more systematic approach to digital preservation. So working across communities um, is challenging. And one of the things really uh, I came across is the use of tape terminology. I'm just going to give you an example. In the sport, sporting event and digital asset, damn digital asset management world, when, talk, when people talked about talk about archiving, they don't mean what we mean, i.e. archiving with a capital A. When they talk, talk about archiving, they, they are referring to the act of moving less or inactive files from spinner disk storage to tape storage. So we, but the funny thing is that they use metaphors from that library and archival world. You know, there's tape library, there's tape archive. Even within the system, you find collections, catalogs, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I don't think I need to explain what archiving with a capital A means to this audience. So our university archives is the designated university department who is responsible for collecting, maintaining, and preserving the official records of the University of Notre Dame. So a little bit more about the workflow related to archiving to tape. Previously, uh, while w the departments were using CAD-DV, the archiving to tape process was actually managed outside CAD-DV using a middleware called Archiware. So they write to the tape library, keep track of the location. And CAD-DV is actually not aware of the assets, the location of it. So as, long, as soon as they are moved, to the tape, you have you can still find the asset because CatDV basically is a is an application. It's a database with the interface on top of the storage. It it maps, you know, it does path mapping to point to the assets. So in that case, in that way, because it's archiving to tape is done outside CatDV. When you need to restore the data, you have to do it outside CatDV within Archiware and restore it to a you know, to the sand, perhaps to a photo to the sand. So that process is fairly manual. So it involves a person being emailed and told, can you restore this for me? In the, with the solution we are implementing, we, the, the middleware called Black Pearl is actually seamlessly integrated with CatDV. That, um, has a lot of advantages. It removes the manual process, so users can directly restore or write to tapes, and you can schedule those jobs whenever and batch in batch. So that is really 
um, a big advantage. It's, in time, I think it's also going to help us manage the SAM much better. Believe me, 600 terabytes sounds a lot. It fills up very quickly. Um, we noticed that after the Notre Dame Stanford college football game a few weeks ago, they put in about five terabytes on the sand. That's a single game. And obviously, you know, going forward, we still have the, we have to think about data migration. The stuff moved into the tape library using Arcuware needs to be perhaps restored and re-ingested re into CatDV to bring it together, but that's something we have to worry about a little bit later. And um, CatDV incorporates FFmpeg. I actually just added this um, slide today because everybody's, you know, because of how frequently it was mentioned. So it actually relies on FFmpeg for, you know, replaying, transcoding, um, producing proxies and things like that. However, you can also um, configure or put together a job and using the commands directly. And you can concatenate this with any other actions. For example, you could watch a folder, do the transcoding, um, move it to another folder, copy it to another folder, move it to a, a target uh, storage location. So, I um, one of the assessment projects Sorry, the, the assessment, the previous assessment project also made a recommendation for us to develop robust workflow in terms of long-term archiving. That's where the university archives come into picture. So the university archives already has a large um, AV collection. We have about 78,000 items on physical carrier film, 16 millimeter, for example, audio cassettes, a lot of videotapes, VHS, Betamax. Um, you know, thanks to our archivist, all of these items are actually cataloged. And over the years, based on a risk, over the years, you know, based, based on the risk of the carriers become obsolete, as well as um, access. We have already um, digitized about 20, 25% of the physical items. That translates to about 240 terabytes of digitized material. 70% of these are sports related, 6% marketing communications, which includes the department which that does fundraising, what we call development. They produce a lot of video content as well. Um, the files within the archives holdings or held by the archives are actually stored in the same tape library. However, um, they use a different um, middleware called Deternity. And we did look into Deternity but chose Black Pearl because of the integration with CatDV. So Deternity allows the archives to use the tape library as mounted volumes. So we actually rely quite a lot on the photo structure and the naming convention to find things. We actually rely a lot on the archivist knowing where things are. Again, the access to these files is fairly manual. And at this moment, the archives is evaluating and putting in place a digital preservation system. So working across communities, you know, in addition to the termin terminology challenges, there's also a lot of non-understanding in terms of what archiving and preservation entail. You know, uh, colleagues have asked me, why can't archives just use cat TV? And I'd say, well, they feel that it doesn't have the support for their workflow, which is aimed at long-term um, preservation. But what does it do? When you say a digital preservation system, what does it 
do more than cat TV. So the examples I usually give are, you know, how checksum is handled. You know, in the digital asset management system or in CAD DV, you can absolutely generate checksums, you know, randomly. But the use case in that world is for mostly for file deduplication. Metadata, yes, it's very flexible. You can customize metadata and implement any schema, but there is no building support. In terms of file format, it's because it's based on FFmpeg, so it does you know, handle a lot of uh, formats, but quite often you notice the transcoding is transcoding down to lossy format to meet the requirements of presentation and viewing, you know, using the concept, you know, what David just explained. So it, lossless um, archival masters, it's not on the radar of you know, the content creators per se. Um, going forward, I think uh, we're at a crossroad. We're getting our system ready. They're getting their sy system ready. Um, I think the most we can do at the moment really is to be aware of the archival requirements and support them as much as possible. And we are fully aware of the fact that we still have a lot of content on physical carriers. And we know our contents are separated. Uh, maybe we need to consider true consolidation of storage uh, and discovery. And it, I think essentially we're looking at the disalignment you know, between the abundance of data being created and the institutional capacity of archiving some of this in perpetuity. So how do we handle the appraisal, the workflow, the handoff? And you know, there seems to be also discussions about retention schedule. Current recent retention sch schedule for AV material is three years. Athletics department, the Fighting Irish Media is saying, we need longer, you know, seven years reflects a student athlete's presence at the university, three years is not meeting our requirements. So there's a lot of conversations going on, a lot of changes. Um, so I take it as my responsibility to think about archiving and preservation, the entire life cycle, and how IT supports content creators as well as university archives. And also think about collaboration, you know, probably with beyond the current boundaries. You know, can we CADV, you know, the IT service, the service put up by IT, can we not serve all DIPs, for example, for archives? And that they focus on APES, for example. And also, can archives provide guidelines in terms of the sort of records of enduring value to guide content creators in managing their content better? So, I hope that I can come back and present you more answers than the challenges I've just, um, you know, presented. Thank you. Yeah, can I go? Um, so I was. For me, I was kind of interested more in the future direction that you're taking and how... Um, so if, if everybody pro who's producing content is producing it and putting it into CAT, um, DB, CAT DB, yep. is there a, is, do you think there's capacity to, um, upon ingest or creation, to, to, to flag the stuff that is permanent retention? Is there scope to do that? Because that will save a lot of effort later. It's even if you're not able to have direct workflows from CatDB to the archival system, at least you can tag what's going to be archived. Absolutely. I think that's where the guidelines from the archives come in. And we I actually, uh, I spoke to the vendors, so the CADV vendor, as well as the potential, the vendor of the potential digital preservation system, which the archives is considering, at least at API level, they're compatible. Mm -hmm. Also, um, the, that system is also based on FFmpeg. So... <laughs> That sounds really interesting. I'd like to, I'm very interested. Yeah, to and, oh, and also we have got a list of metadata that the archives wish to receive, yeah. and we're trying to um, embed that in CAD DV. We're using controlled vocabularies mm -hmm. when it comes to building names and departments, how departments are named. Yeah, just that doing sounds what fantastic. We can. That's what you want. You want it just to be done once, and then it can yep. move along. Fantastic. Um, 
So there's at least two other Black Pearl and uh, users in the room. The BFI and Imperial War Museums are here. Oh, um, wonderful. My, my question is really short. Will you please keep us posted? Because we, we use a different MAM, but we're considering... Uh, how can I frame it? We, I'd really love to learn how you get on with Cat TV. Okay. Um, but just, if you'll permit me, everyone, just after my question, Black Pearl can take a checksum from the MAM and store that checksum and use it in all of its processes to ingest and retrieve. So you have complete fixity checking at every point in the pipeline. Yeah. So if Cat TV aren't using that, then please talk to them because they really should yes. be using that. So the Black Pearl has their own checksum. Uh, no, functionality. Cat, CatDV can give Black Pearl, it's got a REST API, and CatDV can yeah. take your checksum of the object it gets, give that to Black Pearl on the way in, and Black Pearl will store that checksum at every yes, other Yes, yes. But Black Pearl actually, at the storage level, they do checksum as well. They do, or they take it from the map, from the client. It's If the client doesn't give it, Black Pearl creates it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. By default, they'll, they'll create it as well. Yes. Oh, please I will. Thank you. Um, about sustainability, do you have any plan when the, your vendor, the CAT TV vendor, decide to multiply by 10 the price of the license, for example? Say it again. So, sorry. Um, so you, if I understand well, you buy some license from uh, about CAT TV and you use it, okay, but uh, there is only one vendor for that. If they can decide to multiply by 10 the license cost, what is your back and backup plan in that case? Okay, here it is. So first of all, <laughs> the cost related to uh, running the service is split between central IT, so different pots of money. Um, so the license is actually shared by the users. Um, so if it's, it's also a perpetual license, which uh, as long as you, you don't use it concurrently, you can actually com accommodate more users than the number, share number of licenses. And that's actually an advantage. And in comparison with some other dam systems, this is definitely at the cost effective end. I can share the details with you. Going forward, if should that happen one day, um, we can export the database in XML and try to import that elsewhere. <laughs> and also when you negotiate with your next vendor, you don't get the business until you have you know, ingested all the legacy data. So that's yes. you are my clear, answer. You are clear that all the data can be exported to XML. Yes. So you are sure about, yes. about that? Yes. Okay. We actually have samples. <laughs> 